Welcome back to Steel and Vance. Uh, public safety, top of the mm -hmm. list of things for this next few minutes. And a very big, number-filled day today. <laughs> and we're back. Yes, we're going to. Tr trigger warning for some of you. We're going to talk about Surrey Police Services. Full disclosure. I am the wife of the Surrey Police Service chief. And so let's get that on the table for what it's worth. Now the news. This was a big day. So yeah. today, and you know this has been an ongoing battle between the province and the city about whether they stay with the RCMP or go to the Surrey Police Service. So today we got some details from the administrator of the Surrey Police Board, who was appointed by the province to try to get this transition moving. And he detailed uh, the 2024 budget, which has been presented to the city of Surrey in November, but still actually not, they have not commented on it. These are some of the details. Yeah, the numbers are really important because there have been so many numbers sort of tossed around that sounded out of place. They didn't contradictory seem to fit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Contradictory is a good way to put it. And today it was very transparent, uh, following along with the numbers and the details, because let's be honest, you don't even need to be a Surrey taxpayer, which I am not, to be concerned about some of the rhetoric around what might have cost Surrey taxpayers some of the inflated numbers that they were worrisome. And as a provincial taxpayer, obviously we're all concerned about the provincial purse. So Let's bring in the Public Safety Minister, Mike Farmer. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. We talk about the numbers. Yep. Uh, during the election campaign in Surrey, we heard the mayor talking about the transition was going to mean a 55% tax hike. People were like, oh my God. Yeah. And then it was, well, it, it's going to be a double digit tax hike, not that much. Well, now it might be 14% and it might be 18%. And people are very confused. So today we're hearing based on these budget numbers, which were apparently, um, you know, they went, went over a, a company like Deloitte and a professional independent accounting company looked at the numbers and said there should actually be no tax hike. Can you help us understand what's going on? Yeah, no, exactly. Um, the administrator, uh, Mike Sear, is a former police chief out in Abbotsford. His entire career has been spent in policing, so he understands and he's been having to make, you know, policing budgets. And he worked with Jessica McDonald, our special advisor, and uh, um, he's put together the budget that's required to continue the transition. It will see a transition take place over two and a half years. And he's looked at the money that's been available in terms of Surrey. He's looked at Surrey's financials and the $150 million that the province has committed um, and uh, put forward a budget that will allow the transition to proceed. And it is done within Surrey's own fiscal framework, their own projections as to how much they're going to have to spend on policing over the next three years. And the result is there is not a need for uh, a tax increase in the way, and certainly, you know, what we've heard these numbers all over the place. Um, this is a, a proper budget, been thoroughly examined, put together by professional, and uh, it can ensure the Surrey Police transition continues without the need for a, a, a tax increase. So what is the next step then with this budget? Does it... it does Brenda Locke sign off on this now and then it moves forward? So the budget has now been has been presented to the city back in November. Uh, again, the administrator uh, indicated, you know, he wants to work with the city if they have concerns, issues to, to look at and identify uh, and, you know, and, and put together the budget. There's time frames in place that are there for all municipal, all local governments. Right. Uh, so uh, uh, March uh, 1st, uh, it has to be, and then uh, by the, the, the middle of May, the 15th of May, I think it is, is then it has to be, a budget has to be in place. So, you know, he's indicated, hey, we want open door, we want to work with you if you've got issues, but this is a budget that works for the city of Surrey. So my question is, um, there have been a lot of obstacles, a lot of mm -hmm. delays that yep. have cost taxpayers money and slowed the transition. People have said, there's no plan. We keep hearing this. Well, there is a plan. We just need all the parties to sit down and agree to said plan. It appears that the mayor is just hell bed, dead set against the transition. What can you do? How can we get everybody together and sitting down at the table? Well, first off, there's a number of things. One is the uh, the law of British Columbia is now, it was changed in October, is that Surrey will be policed by the Surrey Police Service. Uh, the transition is well along. You know, if you phone um, for, for, for a police officer to show up for an issue in Surrey, 
Uh, half the time it will be Surrey uh, Police Service that shows up, half the time it's the RCMP service that shows up. So this transition is well and truly uh, along the way. Uh, the other is, again, uh, now that uh, the budget's been given to the, uh, to the city of Surrey, it shows them, hey, here's the path forward. Here's the path forward for the next two and a half years to get to a full uh, transition. And so it's time to uh, get on with it. So, pardon my novice on this, mm -hmm. but in following along, the, the process and the drama and from this point to this point, you, you reference the change in the law in this province about how this moves forward. There is no moving backwards. Once you ask the province for a change from one to another, from an RCMP to municipal, there's no going back because that flip-flop has gotten messy to say the least. Yeah. So there is no going back. Absolutely not. We have been abundantly clear. The, the Premier said it, I've said it, there is no going back. The train has left the station, um, it's forward to the Surrey Police Service, it's also in law, it will be the Surrey Police Service period. decision, period, that's it. The mayor seems to be hanging her hat on this judicial review mm -hmm. that she wants. She seems quite confident that they have a good chance of winning, that they'll be able to keep the RCMP. What is this about? Do you think if it's not about money and if it isn't about this is going to be a hardship for taxpayers in Surrey, if that's not actually what the numbers show, then what is this about, do you think? Um, that's a really good question yeah, because I think question. a lot of people, uh, I sometimes ask myself that. I'm, I know people in Surrey ask themselves like that. But right now, and this judicial review that's underway, it looks at the administrative process. It's not about overturning the decision to go back. And even if the it was to rule against the province in terms of process. All it means is, is that the decision goes back to what the existing law is today. And the, ex and the law is you will continue to be, you will be pleased by the Surrey Police Service. So 100% the mayor is not going to win the right to keep the RCMP? No. Does she know that? Yes. Let me put it this way. She should know it. Um, I'm quite confident that, you know, the legal advice she's received either from staff or whoever's advising is, look, uh, you know, all this is going to do is delay it, it, you know, even if it, you go back to the law as it is today, not as it was, but as it is today. And this has been about delay, mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is my view, is that uh, it's just delaying tactics to try and drag it, in my view, into a provincial election. That's it, trying to hurt you? Trying to say oh, you made I, I, a decision, I, 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 I didn't I, like it, I'm going to make got, you pay? I, I think it's blame, wanting to blame the, 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 the province and, and, you know, I don't know. For what? Exactly. If yeah. taxpayers aren't going to get hit. Because that's, that's the thing exactly. with the delay. Every delay costs the taxpayers exactly. more money. Every delay costs the taxpayers money. So what's been laid out is uh, a budget that will ensure a transition that, uh, you know, protects the interests of Surrey taxpayers, that they're not going to have to face uh, a tax increase. I mean, what more could the mayor want? What more? Right? Like, she's been going on. This is going to result. No, it's not. So you were at Surrey Police Services a number of days ago, and you tweeted about it uh, with the recruits here. And this is the one, one of the reasons why we wanted to invite you on here, because yeah. I thought, okay, well, we haven't seen yeah. this show of... Look at this. Pleased to have the opportunity to meet with some of the recruits. When, when the drama is ongoing, mm -hmm. sometimes you forget about the people, mm -hmm. both in the police, Surrey Police Services and the RCMP, frankly, mm -hmm. those yep. who serve and protect. Yep. Speak about the impacts on the recruits, on, on the officers, with this politicking going on. And the fact that the city said we're not going to pay them. So I think there's two things here. One... Um, is, is the impact on officers, whether the Surrey Police Service or RCMP, both of whom do outstanding work. They do a difficult job, and those frontline officers are, you know, they do, they do incredible work uh, keeping the city of Surrey safe. And, of course, it weighs on them, right? Because yeah. you have uh, Surrey Police Service recruits who are told, hey, the decision's made, it's going back, and then, you, the, then they hear from the city, well, no, 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 we're, we're, we're still, we're fighting this. And the reality is, is no, the law in the province is, you will be placed by the Surrey Police Service. Then you have RCMP officers who's like, okay, the decision's been made, um, where am I going to go next, right? And there's lots of opportunity, lots of places, you know, we've got 
issues around recruitment and, and filling vacancies in many communities in the province. So some may say, hey, I'm going to go to the Tri-Cities, to Coquitlam, or I want to go to Burnaby, or I want to go to Richmond, or the North Shore, or Prince George, or wherever, yeah. right? And they want to be able to start to plan. And so this uncertainty is not fair on them either. And then you have new recruits who, you know, this amazing group that, uh, of recruits that I met with, nearly all of them were from Surrey, grew yeah. up in Surrey, really? uh, went to school in Surrey, some of them worked for the city, uh, some were, um, one, I think one was a paramedic, another was in the Coast Guard office. They want to work and stay in their community and help keep it safe. And when they hear, oh, we're not going to pay you, I mean, that's, that's just vindictive. Right. You know, who does that? You want to criticize, you know, me as minister, you want to criticize the provincial government, fine. But you don't take that out on, you know, people who want to do a job, a difficult job, um, that's just not right. Well, here's the thing. Today we heard from the uh, police board administrator, Mike Sear, that they plan, the plan, and there is one, is to hire 180 new officers mm -hmm. by the end of the year. If Brenda Locke won't approve the budget, delays until May, then there's appeals, and this is going to drag on for months, five, four, five, six months, and the Surrey Police Board, what, how do they hire? Who's going to pay? Well, first off, because just because there's a court case in the, the judicial room, that does not stop the transition. We right. don't have to pause or wait for that. So they get to they they can continue to 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 move the transition along. At the same time, there is Section 27 under the Police Act, which allows for if there's a, a dispute to the, go to the Director of Police Services in my ministry, who then looks at all the information and makes a decision, and that decision is binding. But how okay. long is that going to take? Um, well. That's why, that's I think where um, what today was about and, uh, and the administrator laying out the path forward in terms of here's the budget uh, and, and you're able to say, hey, this is not going to be about a tax increase no. um, to the residents of Surrey. It's like, get on with it. And I think, you know, for the mayor to say, oh no, we, we're going to delay, delay. I don't think that uh, that is something that the, the you know, the, the residents of Surrey are going to be too impressed by. Now well, that they're transparent, those numbers yes, that we, yes. we just flashed up on the yeah. board, knowing those numbers, yeah. it's hard to spin it now and put it on a billboard and tell people to be exactly. fearful of exactly. how, how much it's going to cost them when in fact... Here's, here, here's a budget yeah. put together by you know a professional whose entire career has been in policing, police chief who knows about budgets right. and municipal police forces. Let me ask you this though, given the fact that you know there are processes mm -hmm. and she gets a certain amount of time mm -hmm. and then it goes to the province and it goes back, the 30 million a year for five years mm -hmm. that is on offer that yep. has not been yet accepted, yep. can you direct some of that money directly to the Surrey Police Board so they can continue to hire if in fact this is a done deal? The uh, We've indicated that we will structure the money in, in whatever way works for Surrey. So it doesn't yeah. even have to be $30 million a year. Uh, but you know, those are the kinds of options that as minister that I, you know, that, that, that they are there. But the reality is this, the, direct, the, the law is very clear and it gives the director of police services significant power uh, to binding. impose binding to say this is what the budget is. And the reality is, is I, I come back to again, I think, you know, uh, the Surrey residents looking at this will go, hey, wait a sec, we want this over. It was make a decision, right? That's where people were, decisions made. And, um, you know, it's now, what I think most people are like, just get this over with, right? Yes, uh, one more, certainly how I feel. I'm going to slide one more question in here, because what about the Surrey RCMP? Are, there, are they on side with all of what you just explained? We have been in, we've been meeting with them, like my director of police services, my ministry have been meeting with them. Um, Jessica McDonald has been meeting with them, both at the federal level uh, and locally. Uh, they have to be along. They know what the law of the province of British Columbia is. Um, I have met with the uh, the federal minister as well, um, uh, and you know they fully recognized them. Said we respect British Columbia's decision. It's your decision to make. So, bottom line, uh, there should be no tax hike. Certainly not a double digit one. That's right. right? March there 1st, is a plan. Check. There is a plan. The, yeah. the mayor and the RCMP need to sit down and sign off on it. And thirdly, this is a done deal, regardless. Even that court case. The judge is not going to say, yes, you can stay with the RCMP. That is correct.
We, All right. well, we there cleared we up a lot today. Clarified a few things. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Minister. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much. You got to come back. We got probably 50 other things we, we could do, talk actually. to you about. Yeah. But this is definitely we'll a big. We'll back in. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mike Farmworth, the Public Safety Minister. All right. Coming up later on the show, uh, a local couple is helping us all just see better, frankly, even with all the screen time we're using. Yeah, if you have dry eyes, stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Also, when a couple divorces, who gets to keep the family pet? This is often very contentious. BC has just changed the law, so pets are not treated like property. Animal law expert Rebecca Bretter joins us next to explain. But first, of course, we got to get to our viewing party, and that starts with Aaron and Steve in Coquitlam. Hey. Thank you for tuning in. Look we also us. have Garth <laughs> in Kamloops. Hi, Garth. Hi, Garto. Uh, John in Victoria. Hello, Aww, John. Oh, he's got a bum leg yeah, there. And also better. Josie in Surrey. Hi, Josie. Thank you all for watching. Up for grabs, $150 gift card at Brown Social House. Viewing party at checkmedia.ca is how you enter for next week.